Start spreading the news. Ah, uh, so you want to come to New York City, do ya? The city that never sleeps. Some say it's the greatest city in the world, while others compare it to, well, a metaphorical and literal pile of. <laughs> As some of you might know, I was in Austin, Texas for the last two years, and I recently moved to New York City. And after being here for one and a half months, I decided that I am an expert in NYC. So here are my top five reasons for why you shouldn't move to New York City, in my expert opinion. It's just way too damn high. Everybody wants to be here, and that's causing the rent to go up. During the pandemic, there was a time when rent was pretty low, but now rent is higher than ever, and there's an influx of people. New York is not even at capacity right now. It's not even the same level of hustle and bustle as pre-pandemic. So I toured about 20 to 30 different apartments wow. prior to coming here. And at first I thought I was going to live in Manhattan because that's where everything is happening. I, uh, I quickly realized that I am getting a closet for a like, 3,000 a month rent, which is the highest rent that I would have ever paid at that point in my life. I just started moving away from Manhattan, Manhattan and started looking in Brooklyn. And Brooklyn is just so much more affordable. Every borough has different price ranges for apartments. Overall, on average, they're still considered really high compared to the national average. So for example, I was living in a 2,000 square foot home, renting it. It had four bedrooms and two bathrooms. I paid about 2,300 for that in Austin, and it was maybe 15, 20 minutes away from downtown Austin. 2,000 square foot for 2,300. Now, compared to Manhattan, four to 500 square foot studio will run you about three to 4,000. Ridiculous, right? So just be prepared to pay those kinds of prices when you are going to move to New York. Now the New York City area, which includes the five boroughs, they're one of the lucky, lucky cities that get triple taxed, meaning you get tax on a federal level, state, and a local tax. So New York City, kind of like Los Angeles, has its own tax on top of what everyone normally pays. And I believe depending on where you live, at least where I live currently in Brooklyn, it's about six something percent on top of the federal and state income tax. So that's great. I feel like, I feel like New Yorkers just can't catch a break. Like the, this is why everybody is hustling. Everybody has a side gig because they can't even sustain themselves with their day job anymore. Even if it pays six figures, that's almost like the bare minimum to live a decent life in New York City. Now, 
Now, people here can be quite superficial. A lot of it is about looks and the brands that you wear, the nice material things that you have. It's almost like you're in high school again, where there's the popular kids who are hot and good looking and they've accomplished a lot and they're talented and then you have the have-nots and so there's this big class and social economic status discrepancy that's very prevalent and obvious even more obvious in New York than anywhere else because of how expensive everything is and people tend to place a lot of value on money status fame and power i understand that it's like that everywhere but especially in such a metropolis you tend to have a group of elites who live here who are ultra rich and you're surrounded also by these stores and they're flaunted in your face you feel like it's attainable for that reason you feel it's just within reach even though for what you're earning, you could never buy something like that if you only have a low six-figure job, at least not without saving up for a long time. So then you become very self-conscious of the expensive things that other people have the ability to purchase and it makes you aware of how far you are from that. I feel like looks and money definitely get you far here. That seems to be a ticket in to like a higher status or the in group. So often in the city, you may see like a model or like someone who was very accomplished and famous and you may feel like you don't measure up because you're constantly surrounded by these talented beautiful rich people you're suddenly like wow i don't feel like i fit in here at all and you kind of shrivel up into a ball and just go back to your apartment and cry yourself to sleep but um you can choose to ignore it if you don't have to be in the rat race i'm trying not to be and it's so effing peaceful like to just be yourself, love yourself, and not worry about status and image and extricate yourself from being in those situations too much because it can really affect your self-image and your self-esteem. So unlike a lot of popular statistics citing that there's two women to every man in New York, uh, that statistic is not exactly correct. It's right in some areas of New York. I did a little Googling and research just now and I saw that uh, the ratio is about 94 men to 100 women, which is lower than the national average of 97 men to every 100 women. But, but according to this website, it's actually not true for the population of single men and women in particular from the age range of 20 to 35 which I fall in and seems to be the age where people want to be dating and tend to be single and uh, haven't found somebody. So um, according to that statistic, um, that subgroup, I mean, the men actually outnumbered the women. So if you fall in this group, you're single, never married, it's good news as women and it's not as doom and gloom as they make it out to be for dating. Don't believe that statistic of like how hard it is to find men because they're everywhere. Um, and it only takes one anyway. So it's not about quantity, but quality. The dating scene has a high bar. So many women are dressed to the nines, have designer bags, have their hair did, makeup, and they're super lean and fit. When you're dealing with those choices, 
as a man, then of course you would go for the best looking one. And、um, yeah, so there's some competition for sure. To me, it's also a good motivation to better myself and to look good for myself. So men have more options, and so you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta look good and avoid those those Peter Pan men. When there's so many people, why do you wanna add to it? Get out of here! We don't want you here. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's great that New York has so many people from all different backgrounds. You have to be aware with this kind of like densely compacted living environment. You're going to have a lot of noise. Where I live currently in Brooklyn, it's not so bad. Brooklyn, I feel like it's almost like a suburb. Of New York, I like to think that is the Austin of New York. Actually, it's like really chill, really laid back. I never feel unsafe. When you're in Manhattan, however, especially if you're in Midtown near Times Square, that's another story altogether. You're going to have traffic noises, people noises, all hours of the day,、uh, and that can be very. Irritating. Some people buy noise machines to drown out the noise and the cityscapes. Some people enjoy it. You gotta be aware of that, or find a place that has good sound insulation. Is that what it's called? Noise cancellation. Anywho, you might need to invest in those depending on what area you live in. Because it's so populated, it's also hard to find seats, especially in cafes or parks. Of course, it depends on what hours of the day, but in rush hour, you'll be hard pressed to find a good spot and kind of have to fight for a spot. As someone who's lived in the Midwest most of her life, that's a change. That's definitely different. There's plenty of space usually in the Midwest. In New York, you have to learn to share that space. Be comfortable with, say, someone working out right next to you when it's peak hours at gym time. Those who've been here a while, they don't seem to mind that much because they're already used to it. But if you have this discomfort with being in close proximity with people, that might be something to consider before you move here. Another side effect of a densely populated city is that there's a lot of garbage. So wherever wherever I walk, there's always like piles of garbage. And at first, I'm like, oh, this is so like you know dirty, and why isn't anyone picking this up? That's how the garbage are disposed here. And then of course it gets really smelly, especially when it rains. Oh my gosh! I don't even want to get into it. Like it's just you're you're fighting with the garbage. Just something to think about when you move to the city where there's nine million people. Yeah. Hey everyone! Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, hope you like it. And as you might have gathered, I have recently moved from Austin to New York. Uh, and so, if you're thinking about moving here, I、um, uh, hope that was helpful. And if you are a New York resident, let me know whether you agree and what reasons you think people、uh, should consider before they move to New York. All right. Well, until next time, say bye, Yogi. He hates me.